Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd. I hope you're doing well. Uh, let's talk about some recent comments from one of the greatest producers the music industry has ever known, Jack Antonoff, who apparently in a recent conversation made it clear that uh, he's, he's really excited about where the music industry is going. With him saying, I'm loving where the music business has gone because it's just melted down into nothing but what people like. And you could talk your crap about this or that, but the fans are God. What they say goes, and Cruel Summer is a testament to that. It was always our favorite song on the album, that record being Lover, and then with nothing with no gas on the fire, with no one on the business side doing anything, the kids started playing it more and more and more. It's happened with that song, it's happened with a bunch of things, and I just think that the music business is in a fun place for just the work. Well, look, as you guys know on this channel, I'm a fan of Jack's stuff. I like what he's done with a myriad of different artists who I've given high praise on my YouTube channels. And look, to Jack's testament, the surface level description of what he is uh, describing here, the history of Cruel Summer and so on and so forth, is accurate. When Taylor Swift came out with that Lover record years ago, that song, specifically that song, was not treated as a single. And yet years down the road, that song is charting quite high now, which, yeah, sure, that is one cool aspect of the music industry these days that you can have like, you know, such a random sleeper hit where ultimately the fans decide. And there's a ton of other examples, too. You have Future with Mask Off. You have Post Malone with Better Now. These two are tracks that originally by these artists and by uh, the music business that was promoting them at the time. Uh, these songs were not treated as singles, not expected to hit as big as they did. And yet they they freaking did. And look, even on more micro levels, fans are able to essentially decide uh, what songs from a particular album or project uh, works best for them by either listening to them singularly or putting them in a playlist uh, all their own, which is the reason why you look at a project, a very long and expansive project like Playboy Cardi's Whole Lot of Red, and you see such a vast separation between the streams on uh, one track versus another track. Uh, many of these songs not treated as singles or, uh, you know, put out there to be emphasized over any other song on the record. It's literally just the fans deciding, you know what, this track over here is going to have tens of millions more streams than this other one. So in that sense, yes, the fans are free to choose to uh, listen to and repeat certain songs from certain projects over and over and over. But I don't know if I share Jack's vision for just how like free and open everything is now. Absolutely, I would have at one time during the dawn of like the blog era and as streaming was, you know, just uh, starting to be introduced to the internet and music fans generally. And it was kind of like the canary in the coal mine in a certain way. And, you know, this whole Spotify thing and what Apple was doing with Apple Music, you, you never knew uh, some weeks whether or not like this was going to kind of disappear in a month or so because there was still a chance the labels might kibosh the whole thing due to them not making any money off of it. And you had certain platforms competing with others with exclusive access to post certain records earlier than others. It's funny to think about it this way because, I, you know, it's, it's, it's not like we've been into the music streaming era for that long uh, altogether, but uh, the earlier years of it were pretty chaotic, and there was a serious element of excitement to it given uh, that there were all of these newer and uh, fresher and more underground artists kind of popping off every other month, who we certainly wouldn't have heard of if not for the fact that uh, people have the freedom to just kind of randomly click on whatever they want. But streaming platforms, and especially Spotify, are not new anymore. On top of it, they're no longer really an alternative to uh, the old ways of record labels doing business. They're exactly how labels want to do business. Spotify is more in bed with record labels than it's ever been. Its algorithm is stronger and more predictive than ever. And through the algorithm and the front page and playlists and PR, they've really worked out this mechanism that herds a great deal of the people using the platform into a handful of chart topping artists that the labels are most interested in pushing. As a result, I'm not as much feeling that everything is free and exciting now gospel 
that Jack is here. Because if the outcome here being that uh, we're just kind of collectively as an audience focusing on the same handful of major label artists, if that outcome is being arrived to through streaming in the same way that it would be during the radio age, are we really getting freedom of choice? Like you're still being pushed to the biggest cash cows in the music industry and the illusion of choice uh, comes in the shape of like, well, uh, yeah, sure, you're still listening to Drake, you're still listening to Taylor Swift, but hey, look at all the different Taylor Swift songs you get to choose from. That is not exciting. That is not change. That is not a challenge to the status quo. That is not new. That is not different. That is just a new version of the same level of control that the record labels have always had or try to have when it comes to the art and music that you are getting exposed to on a regular basis. And look, again, to Jack's original point, sure, is it cool that the fans can decide like which Taylor Swift song is truly the best one that they wanna listen to the most? Yeah, but that in and of itself isn't indicative of, you know, some kind of like freedom of uh, taste and musical exploration, which we know isn't really happening when we look at the Billboard charts and we see the same artists charting again and again and again and again and again. And the only reason that you can't really call it out or rip it apart is that the means and mechanisms by which this happens are much more invisible now than they used to be. Before, it used to very obviously be a variety of different programming through traditional media channels. Certain programmers are pushing this song or that artist to you on MTV. Certain programmers are uh, making sure this or that new single plays on the radio waves. Certain artists or albums are guaranteed to get a positive or glowing review view uh, through whatever magazine or publication is uh, looking to uh, continue getting access to that artist uh, in the future for an interview or a cover or whatever. The way things used to be in this way was so much more obvious, but don't be fooled. It's exactly still like that right now, maybe in some ways worse, it's being done more covertly by way of, yeah, log on here or get a subscription here and you'll be able to listen to whatever you want, how much you want, just listen, 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 binge, 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 and slowly over time, the apparatus that we immerse you in is going to push you a little bit more toward this and that and the other thing. This algorithm could actually be working to push people toward artists and acts and albums that are maybe not getting that much exposure, but like, why would it do that when there's money to be made with the majors? Of course, the artists that get pushed at the end of the day are going to be the ones that uh, make them the most money. The pen that fans are being walked into may be larger than it was in the 90s in terms of, yeah, you can listen to this, 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 and this, but it's still a pen, which is why on this point, sadly, I think Jack Antonoff is just dead wrong. Things are not moving in a nice or a cool or a fun direction, especially if you're an artist who's just starting and trying to get out there. And as the number of ways you have to effectively make a living long term seem to be getting smaller and smaller in number. But yeah, those are my thoughts. That's my opinion. Let me know if you can drop off yours in the comments. <laughs> You're the best. Over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Uh, Anthony Fantano, Jack Antonoff, uh, forever.